Good morning and welcome back. Today's video is going to talk about 10 things that I never knew prior to moving to a mobile home. So if you're considering manufactured housing living, um, this might be something that you would be interested in knowing as well. So the first thing probably applies mostly to people who live in a colder climate. I live in Minnesota. We had very, very cold weather over January and February this past winter. I'm talking like negative 20, um, negative 25, very uh, regularly throughout both months. And so I had a big problem with my main side door not wanting to shut. And I guess that's a known, I don't, I wouldn't say it's a phenomenon, but it's a known issue that doors in mobile homes do and can shift. Um, I'm sure this happens in single family homes, although in the ones that I lived in over the years, I, I really never saw this problem, at least to this extreme, to the point where these doors would not shut at all. Um, and it was very panic inducing because I, you know, you just know, don't know nowadays, I don't wanna leave my things unattended. Um, so what I called the dealer and he kind of rattled an explanation that was a lot more technical than I understood or could explain. But I think it has something to do with the frost heaves under the home, um, the expansion into the footers and the piers that are holding up the home. Apparently it doesn't have to do anything with the leveling because this home is so new and it was leveled per code, etc. So my older son and I, we decided to try uh, a door planer and those are very inexpensive. I Unfortunately, I don't have the tool to show you. He's got it at his house, um, but it, it shaves the door and so we very conservatively went to the top of the door and shaved and planed off um, a little bit. We scraped it and that helped uh, tremendously. Um, the other thing I guess you can do is you can adjust the door plate, um, but we, we didn't see a lot of area of being able to do that and we don't really we didn't really have the tools to do that so we did the planer um, and I think it's just gonna be something that I'm gonna have to cope with I'm more prepared for it this winter um, and I think it's also the expanding and contracting of the wood so that's just something to be on alert for the second thing I didn't realize is that my home, at least, the sink side, uh, the, well, it's a double-sided sink in, in the kitchen, and it is an RV-sized sink. Um, I don't know if a lot of people out there still hand wash their dishes, but I do. I actually don't like dishwashers because I feel like the time that you use to actually rinse something, put it in there, run the um, run the dishwasher in its cycle, and then let it dry and then put it away, it just prolongs the whole process. I do use it a couple of time a year, times a year to sanitize everything completely, but other than that, um, I prefer the hand washing method and so I actually had to go online to find an RV size dish strainer I found this on eBay um, I had measured and I looked at Walmart I looked at Target I looked at a few other retail stores and they did not sell anything uh, a dish rack of this size so I read online that most uh, manufactured housing have standard size sinks, and this may be standard size, just a smaller one. The third thing I talked about in one of my previous videos that you may have caught or watched, thank you, and it's the furnace filter. So these furnaces um, are different than a uh, traditional home, a standing freestanding home, and you can't use the square filters that they sell in the store, at the hardware store. I had to buy this roll of filter and I found this at a local um, store here called Menards. And um, this lasts a long time. I've been changing it monthly and I've got quite a bit left after 10 months of living here. 
The fourth thing that I wasn't really prepared for because when I toured the home, I was uh, informed that because it's newer, it's built to uh, code standards and um, that I should be toasty over the winter. Now again, we do have extreme, extreme cold here in Minnesota, so uh, I, I you know, I'm not complaining or anything by far, but the windows get very, very cold, the areas around the windows. And so I was kind of advised here in the park, talking to some other folks, uh, that I should plastic the windows. And I thought, plastic the windows? This is a brand new home. That's usually, I've done that on older homes that I've lived in, but I wasn't expecting that. Um, but I did go out and get one of these wind uh, window insulator kits. They're very easy. You just, you know, cut the shape of the form of the, um, of the window. And I use double stick tape, which is good and bad, it holds it up very well, but if you try to peel the double stick off like I did of one, uh, actually my back door here, it will remove all the paint, so I had to touch that back up. So the I do plan on um, plasticking again this winter, so I actually just left the double stick up because that one side still pretty sticky. The fifth thing is the bathtub. And this maybe would not be a concern or even maybe anything you think of if you're not into taking baths like I am, like we do here. Uh, I've just been doing it a long time and it's very relaxing. I think it's very uh, good for your health. You can do um, some Googling on that if you're interested in it. But um, so if you're shower type, this won't apply to you. They don't have any overflow drains. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I tried to look on the internet. I just could not find a firm answer. So if you know, you could share, or if you think you know, uh, I thought it was a little, and I still think it's a little strange. So if you do run baths, you do have to be aware of where the water is standing because there are no overflow drains. The sixth thing is um, the, the noise level. So I am, I will say noise sensitive. I am a quiet person by nature and so I like peace, I like quiet, especially in this day and age. We live in a lot of loud things online and uh, things that are larger than life sometimes in person. And so I value my quiet. And this isn't so much uh, related to the neighbors or um, the in-home activity. It's more when I'm laying in bed and it's, it's sleep time. I've noticed that the rain, I hear like the rain and the snow pretty um, pretty intensely from my level. I guess coming from a home, there's just so much more uh, build and insulation that drowns out that noise a little bit. So it was a little bit different to be laying in bed and to really hear the rain water or the snow intensely on the roof and on the sides of the home. But now I've actually really started to like it kind of is like a noise that lulls me to sleep. This next one, the seventh thing is probably more park dependent where you're at. I think a lot of trailer parks uh, by now are older and so their infrastructure is older. And here in my park, if they need to shut the water off, they don't do it like a house, like it's individual. They shut the whole park's supply off. And uh, sometimes they will give you notice, sometimes they will not if there's an emergency water line breakage. My park doesn't have like an alert system via text or anything. It's just they'll put it on a sign if you happen to be driving in and out of the park. If not, if, you, if you're in a situation like mine where you uh, try to turn on the water or flush the toilet and nothing happens, Please don't panic. You may want to call your park manager, that's what I usually do, or a neighbor, and just say, hey, do you have water? That has happened about five times over the past 10 months since I've been living here. So I'm very stocked up now on gallons of water 
that I have actually in my 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 garden tub. That's kind of my storage since I don't really use that tub anyhow. Um, so that's something to be prepared for. The eighth thing is uh, the runoff on the side of the home where your front side door is. And I ended up getting an awning because the day I moved in here, it was pouring rain. And my sons and I got soaked. I mean, really, really soaked. What's going on? Well, I figured out it's it's the pitch of the roof is appropriate, of course, but there's no eaves. So there's not like an underhang under the roofing. Usually with houses, there's about a foot, a foot and a half spacing uh, from the side of the home to where the roof extends out with the eave. But here it's just, the roof and then the siding and so you will get a lot of water pour at least i noticed that and snow pour so i ended up getting an awning here and that has worked out fabulously the ninth thing and this may be due to me having a newer furnace but and it's more so during the winter because obviously i'm not using the furnace in the summer but i have a ton of lint here and it drives me bonkers with my hair. My, um, I, my hair will pick up a ton of lint. It'll be floating in the air. Uh, I'll have to clean my brushes and my combs to soak them in hot water and use an old toothbrush to clean all the lint off at least once or twice a week. Uh, so that's something that I've noticed as well. I didn't notice that in my home or previous homes that I lived in. And then the last thing is something I've talked about in a previous video as well, and that's hanging pictures. When you go to hang your uh, heavier items, you have to locate a stud, and these aren't always centered. So a lot of my photos are staggered. They're sort of off center and I guess if that's not bothersome to you that's it and it's really not a big deal but it's a little bit different if you're if you're kind of going for a certain aesthetic that you want things a certain to look a certain way when you hang up your artwork you just won't be able to unfortunately and th unless there's a different way that or a different method that somebody um, knows out there I don't want to get too make things too complicated or make too many holes in my walls so I do just follow the studs but they're they they tend to be off center and that's all I had to share. Those are my 10 things I never knew prior to moving to a mobile home. I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry about the lighting. It's been going on and off. We're having um, some cloudy weather this morning. And um, I thank you very much again for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day and we will see you next time.